not that this is Greek, but this is <laughs> the, the, the pronunciation in Greek. I should, I should write. Bibles with you or found 
some meanings in the chapter that he had no idea about. And he read it like 60 times before. He read this exact chapter like 60 times before. So the word of God is very deep, it's very rich. And always when you, I don't mean to go off topic, but this is very worth uh, mentioning. When you read the Bible, it's good to pray before you read the Bible. It's very good to do that. Because the Lord will open your eyes and will open your heart to benefit more from the Word of God. Otherwise, you might be like those people of biblical criticism or whatever, that they just read the Bible to attack it. Or read the Bible to joke about it. Or those scoffers who, who think that the Bible is a, is a matter of a joke. You know, let's study it to defute it and to to prove that Christianity is false and, and no such thing as Jesus Christ, whatever. So you need to be different than those people, otherwise you can't be true Christian. So, you need to be devoted. If you really need to live godliness, you need to be devoted. Who can tell me when we are devoted to God? Or consecrated, let's put it this way. Devoted or consecrated? Where? Or where? Where and when? Very good. When you are, those of you who are baptized for Christ have put on Christ. When we were baptized, we put on Christ. We became Christ. And on judgment day, when we stand before the just judge, he's going to look at us as Christ. The Father loves the Son. You remember that verse? The Father loves the Son. And He gave Him everything. So when God looks at us and He sees His only begotten Son, His beloved Son, He will love us. It will be like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And that's why you read verses in the Bible that don't apply to us. Like we say, the most righteous the sinless, what, and, and you say, me? That's it's definitely not me. It's probably talking about somebody else. Yes, he's talking about Jesus Christ, but since you put on Christ, he's talking about you. But you need to be devoted. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to understand that you are Christ's son. What are these words here? What do they imply? Of course, I'm not going to go through every one of them because I said we need to make it quick. So what, what do you get from all these expressions here? Piety, ascetism, worship, fear of God, respecting the law, which is the word of God, complying with God's orders and avoiding prohibition. What, 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 do, you, what do you see in all this? talk a lot, I know, I'm sorry, but uh, I want to engage you in the conversation. What What do you see in all this? Holiness. Hmm? Holiness. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, what else? That's not that's not wrong answer. I'm sorry. I'm not. No, 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 I don't mean to uh, pick on Tony or anything like that. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, with these with the requirements that you prove that you do that. What's your name? Marian. Requirements is a word that Protestants hate. Okay. That was recent. I just came back from Paris actually a couple of days ago, and. I met with a couple of Protestants there. Of course, the Egyptian Protestants. Um, and uh, I, was, I had a conversation with one of them about baptism. And I was just mentioning baptism and he said, but there is no such thing as baptism. And he was talking like very you know, serious and very, uh, you know, he trusts in, in what he believes and what he says. I said, how come you say that? It's very clear in the Bible when the Lord talks about baptism. I said, 
Listen. When we discuss a topic, okay, you might say something, I might say something else, right? So let's divide ourselves here in this room into three groups. One group will say something that is not in the Bible, it's not biblical. One group will say something in the Bible, but it's different than the other group. And the third group will also say something that is in the Bible, but it's different than the other group. So basically, two groups are talking from the Bible, biblical stuff, and the third group is saying something from somewhere else in the universe, not in the Bible. Okay? The group that talks not from the Bible will be easily ejected, because then the two other groups will say, hey, listen, this is not biblical, you're talking... Uh, something else here, so we'll put you on the side for now. We'll get back to you later. The two other groups that debate, each one of them is saying something from the Bible, right? He said, yes. I said, you say something that you think is true, I say something that I think is true. He said, yes. He said, then we need the third group to be a judge to say who is true and who is not. Because both of us are using verses from the Bible. So which one of us is correct? Then we have to resort to this. Not this book, but this field of science or, or, or study, patrology. Why? Because we need a third group that judges and say which one of us is right and which one of us is wrong. And he didn't answer. Not because I, I meant to embarrass him, but I meant to clar clarify to him that it's not a matter of what we say. It's a matter of what the early church fathers delivered to us. And what Marianne said about these things, these are things delivered to us from the early church fathers. They didn't say, you just believe and you shall be saved. No, there is worship, there is respecting the law, there is orders, and there are some things that we cannot do. Who can debate this? Not you, not me. The early fathers. Why? Because we need to study the early fathers to find out how the early Christians believed. Not because... Um, I remember a couple couple months ago, a group, my church is in New York, is in Astoria, Queens. So I had a group from one of the universities like Rutgers, but in New York. And they came to the church. And they met with me on Sunday. So one lady, she asked me a question. She said, she raised her hand. Well, first I had to give an introduction about the Coptic church. So, after I finished... One lady raised her hand and she said, May I ask you a question, Father? I said, Go ahead. She said, I'm thinking about joining, I forgot what denomination she, she mentioned, but I'm thinking about joining so and so church. What do you think, Father? Should I join that church or not? Of course, the obvious answer will be, No, no, you have to be Coptic Orthodox. That's the obvious answer. Right? I'm a Coptic priest. That was not my answer. I said to her, listen, I don't like the approach of attacking. I don't like to attack people. You are wrong, I'm right, you listen to me or you're going to go to hell or something like that. No, no. I like to, to take your hand and let you read something. Or put you on the right path and leave you there. And you find your way. There's no, nothing more beautiful than finding your own way and making sure that you are right. You see? Not walking out of the room upset that Abuna embarrassed you or cornered you or you didn't know how to answer. That has nothing to do about your relationship with God. Our relationship with God is much, it's much bigger than this. Okay? God is not that uh, narrow-minded, you know. So she liked the answer. I didn't say yes or no. I didn't say you're wrong, I'm right. But I put her on the right path. I said, study 
and read. Read about the early church fathers. Read about Christianity in the early ages. And and now nowadays, some people, I don't know if you're taking a picture of me, Tony, or yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> camera here. <laughs> There's already a camera here. Uh, <laughs> I'm to be uh, in the from the beginning of the same chapter till verse eight that the one that you read. Uh, sure. Uh, you, you close the page. No, no, I, I, okay. I got, I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Tony. Um, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables, and exercise yourself toward godliness. Okay. See, what we're reading here is talking about this. You comply with God's orders, and you respect the law. You follow the law of the Lord. What we're reading now is the law of the Lord. Now, notice here, now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, and many fathers agree that later times means now and the future. So we, we are in the close to the end. There are many signs around us. We can see the tree already blossoming, Israel, as the Bible talks about it. And we can see signs or signs, actually signs, that talk about the end. So, we have not to follow spirits and doctrines of demons, as the Bible says here, but we follow what? The law of the Lord. Notice the Bible here calls it the doctrines of demons. Yes, some teachings nowadays in the world are teaching of demons. It's very evil. Not straightforward, you know, satanic worship, but some other things are are demonized. Like, for example, here says, forbidding to marry, for example. Well, this is not like nowadays happening, but it's an example. It's an example of the wrong teachings. People teach things out of, not out, out of this world. Who told you that? Where in the Bible that says that? Many things you will hear nowadays, you will ask the person, where in the Bible do you see that? He says, who told you that I'm taking the Bible as my source? Well, well, guess what? I'm Christian. I respect the law. I comply with the word of God. Because it's the word of life. According to my faith and my belief. It's the word of God. It's the word of life. Who's next? What, what, what was your... Uh, uh, two Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 5. Yeah. Having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such power turn away. Turn away. Can you read from the beginning again also? But know this that in the last days perilous times. Well, well, watch, watch. This is a different part. We're reading something different here. But he's also re repeating the same expression, which is. Okay. No. no. Say the first verse, Danny. But know this, that in the last days... In the last days. Kullu biollak eh? Last days. The end of times. It's talking about our times. Yes. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such power turn around. Oh my God. So many uh, descriptions, right? Bad descriptions, unfortunately, about, about people. But then it says, having a form of godliness, but they deny its power. So, godliness can be deceived. Not godliness itself, but it can be 
Well, I should say it a different way. Godliness can be... People can deceive you and, and, and make you think that they are, you know, um, they put on godliness, but they are devils. As the, the, the Bible explains sometimes that they come to you in the attire of sheep, but they are a oh, savage wolves. So you have to be very careful when you talk about these things. Especially all these descriptions that we just heard, things that God ate prohibits, says no, don't do these things. What I'm trying to do here is, through all these discussions and um, analysis, is to bring to you the idea that godliness is just, it's not like uh, godliness. No, it's a very big meaning. It's a very big word. It has a lot of meanings inside of it. Who's next? First MCA? Two. Uh, verse one. Okay. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. Yeah. So, in order for us to be able to live in godliness, one of the elements that we need is what we just heard. I'll read it to you again. Supplications, prayers, intercessions. Prayers, intercessions, right? Of what? And giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Did you hear this part? Did it catch your attention? Uh, nowadays, what authorities are doing in this country? <laughs> hmm? It says here that we need to pray so we can live in peace. We don't find somebody coming up with, uh, with, a, with a Supreme Court decision or something and he starts to flip the, 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 the things upside down. I have watched some uh, priests or pastors from American churches they are going crazy about this topic. I don't want to say Abu Nari. You are Egyptian, so put this topic on the side. No, they are not Egyptians. And they are, they are furious about this topic. Because they, and, and one of them actually said, unless we go back to the Bible, we cannot survive. We will not be able to survive. He's not Egyptian. He's not Coptic. He's not Orthodox. Let me put it that way. None of the above. So, we need to pray. Pray for authorities and kings means governments. We need to pray for them. Because they, they, they are now doing things that were not done in the previous history of the United States of America. Actually, that pastor that I was listening to, he said, he was talking about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and and he mentioned stories about those people, how religious. Actually, one of them, he asked for fasting for three days in the entire country because there was a problem that needed to be solved. And, and the pastor said, does this sound like anything like Washington today? Of course not. Fasting and prayer? The government is asking for fasting and prayer? Are you kidding me? So we need to pray for this country. If we want to live in godliness, it says here, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. We want to live in godliness. We want to live with God. We need to pray for this country. We love this country. This is our country. We're Americans. So we pray for our country. We pray for our, our government. And I'm sure all of you know that in the prayers of the church, we pray for our country. We pray for the government. Who's next? Hmm. Me, I, I forgot the reference. Oh. <laughs> uh, which one are we doing now? Two? I think your, yours was uh, uh, First Timothy 3.16. Okay. Okay. Oh. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. 
that God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among Gentiles, believed on the on in the world, received up in glory. Well, I wanted to leave this one to the end, but since you mentioned it now, we will talk about it now. This is one of the most famous verses of the Bible. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the earth, received up in glory. Okay. So, I wanted to leave this at the end, but actually we mentioned it now, that the mystery of godliness, that the secret power of godliness comes from what? According to this verse. From who? From God. From Jesus Christ. The incarnate Logos. When we believe in Jesus Christ as God incarnate, we, are, we can receive the power that enables us for godliness. Without this faith, we cannot. And this is actually a topic that many of the youth debate, including in my own church. They, they, ask, they ask about this a lot of times. They say, Abuna, we have friends in college, we have friends at work, we have people all over, and they are not Christians, but they are very good people. Are they going to go to heaven or not? And I am very careful when I answer this because I don't want to sound, you know, uh, tough. <laughs> but the answer is in the Bible. Do you recall St. John the Baptist when people came to him and he witnessed to Jesus Christ? What did he say? He said, whoever believes in the Son huh, shall have eternal life. And whoever does not believe in the Son shall never see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Which means, I want you to, to, to picture this. This is God. Okay? According to the biblical teaching, to, just to save time, this is the wrath of God. And this is the world. Okay? You will have to erase this because I don't want the people coming, <laughs> coming after us think that we are planning for a war here. So, so God, huh? so the rest of God is on the whole a world. The only shield that can shield us from this wrath of God is huh? this umbrella here. This is like raining too much like this. The rain is coming down on the whole world. There's no exception. The only, the only cover, the only roof that we have is Jesus Christ. If I'm here, anywhere here, I'm, I'm um, saved. I'm protected from the wrath of God. If I'm not here, it doesn't matter who I am. I'm a good person. I'm a rich person. I'm a poor person. I'm an ugly person. I'm... I don't know whoever I am, I'm outside of this area here, I'm under the what? <clears throat> the wrath of God. So, the main power that gives us the ability to be godly men is our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and following all these things. I'm going to have to stop here, although I have like, three more points, but because of the sake of time, and I want to leave the, the last five minutes for questions. We finish at four, right? Uh, we have classes at four. Oh, we have classes at four. So we have one minute for questions. <laughs> well, it looks like we have no minute for questions. <laughs> uh, no questions? You're tired enough listening to all this? So, what is your... Yes? So, how do we... Practice That's the first point that I mentioned, Tony. <laughs> okay. okay, we practice. We practice. I'm not picking on Tony. Tony is. Uh, I know him for years, and I, I just love him. Um, so, uh, all 
all these things. Okay? We believe in Jesus Christ. We are baptized. We, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells in us. We comply with God's orders and laws. And we avoid prohibitions which are sins. You see, I can I write this because I cannot summarize the Bible in 20 minutes or in or in 20 hours or 20 weeks. It's, this is this is life. The Lord Jesus Christ said, "The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life." So, if you expect me to explain life to you in 20 minutes, I'm sorry, I, I can't. You will have to try it on your own. When you read the word of God, when you live godliness, you, li you need to live godliness, not to sit here and learn about godliness. That's the difference between the saints that we read about in the stories, the actual, actual <clears throat> saints that we read about, and us. We are saints too. The Bible calls us saints. But what are, what are the difference? They practiced. They took it seriously. They put it into action. While we, sometimes we don't do that. We take it lightly. It's like the, one of you just left now and said, we go to the gym. When you go to the gym and you pick some weights and you practice and you do it like it's 300 days out of the year, you, of course, you will be different than me. <laughs> of course. You're going to look different. You're going to be more powerful. You're going to be a better weightlifter or better swimmer or whatever sport that you exercise. Christianity is no difference. If you practice all these things more than the rest of the people, you grow in your spiritual life. But you need to do it out of a pure heart. You need to do it sincerely. It's not like, ah, oh, oh, I, I do this every week. But, but you're sick and tired of it. You don't want to do it. The Lord is looking for a... Huh? My son give me... Your heart. Amen. Any more questions? Thank you very much for having me here.